disclosure as an issue should work every way. The United States should say what it has. You know where I'm going with this. A yes, no question for you. Does Israel have nuclear capabilities and nuclear weapons? Yes or no? Uh, we've always said that we won't be the first to introduce it, so we haven't introduced it. But that's and not an answer to the question. Do you have them or do you not? Of any country. It's as good an answer as you're going to get. But I'll tell you one thing, Chris, and I think it's important. You know, Iran signed NPT. Iran signed all sorts of uh, commitments. Iran said that they don't have this nuclear weapons program. And Iran calls daily for the annihilation of my country. Absolutely. We don't do that. We anyway. understand that there is an existential threat from Iran and others. We understand that Iran is known for lying on this issue. That's one of the big motivating factors for the deal in 20, uh, 2015, as it was explained to us. But what I'm saying is if disclosure matters so much, what message does it send when you won't confirm something that is widely believed by the entire international community? How does that inspire the spirit of disclosure? I, I said that the... I said that the, it's not the spirit of disclosure, it's a commitment, a specific written commitment by Iran as part of the deal to disclose what it has. Iran undertook that specific commitment. I understand, but you know what their the take on it is, lied. is that you won't That's even confirm point, that you have nuclear weapons when the world already believes that you do. Why? Why keep that quiet? Well, you, you can make all your assumptions. One thing is clear, Israel is not threatening the annihilation of any country. And you know, it's interesting that the nuclear arms race that I predicted would unfold once this deal was signed, because everybody knew that they were just kicking the can forward for a few years, and as time passes, Iran will get a nuclear arsenal. So now you hear other countries in the region saying, we want nuclear weapons too, or rather, we want unlimited enrichment, uh, uh, nuclear enrichment of uranium the way Iran gave it. If Iran has it, why shouldn't we have it? So in fact, what this thing is doing Nobody said that about Israel. You may think about Israel what you want for, uh, for decades. Nobody cared. But as soon as they understood that this regime in, in Tehran, this murderous terrorist regime that wants to conquer all the mm -hmm. Middle East and is sending its terrorist tentacles throughout the world, the minute they understood that it has a clear path to a nuclear arsenal, everybody now in the Middle East is trying to get their hands on nuclear weapons. Not a good idea. I so if you want peace, the crucial thing is don't let Iran get a clear path to the bomb. That's Listen. what that deal does. And I think if you want to assure the peace and security of the Middle East and the world, you can't let that happen. Listen, you, you know, you make a lot of strong points about that. Obviously, less is the only direction to go with nuclear capabilities, not more. And your points about the risk that Iran uh, poses in the region, let alone with its nuclear capabilities, are well known and echoed by many of your allies. My point was just that if what we want is for people to come clean about things, everybody should be open and honest, and it will create a different kind of pressure on what kind of dialogue is expected. But your points are well taken, Mr. Uh, Prime Minister. It's good to have you on the show, Benjamin Netanyahu. Thank you very much for taking the opportunity. Thank you for having me.